<laughs> Nvidia graphics cards are exploding again, but are you actually going to be affected by this? And if so, what can we do to stop it? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by RGB Swap, a better alternative to eBay that I really think you should take a look at. RGB Swap is a marketplace exclusively for selling and buying computer parts that offers much lower fees than competitors such as eBay as well as greater protection against scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, you're guaranteed to be protected since all orders have to be paid for first and the funds are held for 48 hours after the buyer receives the item or they leave feedback, ensuring that you never get sold a bad item. Additionally, all disputes are manually reviewed and PayPal is used exclusively for an extra layer of security. I gotta tell you guys, I like this website a lot and I really want it to take off as a better alternative to eBay, so please, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts online, click the link in the description below and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. Alright, so a little while ago, a bunch of reports of NVIDIA RTX 30 series GPUs dying were making their way online after some users had tried out the beta version of Amazon's upcoming MMO New World. Now, at the time, we thought we had nailed it down to the EVGA RTX 3094 The Win 3 Ultra because, as it turned out and as EVGA admitted, there were some hardware issues that were found, and I believe they mentioned about 30 GPUs that were returned, so we thought we had it all figured out, but as it turns out, the New World game actually did recently release, and there are even more reports of GPUs dying, and I do actually believe that Jay over from Jay's Two Cents mentioned that he uh, saw a lot of people reporting that now Gigabyte cards seem to be having the most issues, and if that turns out to be true, well then this means that it's not just down to one card, there are lots of various different NVIDIA RTX 30 series GPUs that are having this issue now that the game is out, but the question is, you know, what is actually causing this issue? Is it the game? Is it hardware problems? And that's what we're going to get to the bottom of, and after we actually go ahead and figure out what's causing the issue, I'm going to show you guys what you can do to avoid this issue happening to you, because believe it or not, yes, there are some things that you can do in the settings of your computer to stop this from occurring, because we all know that right now if something causes your hardware to fail at the moment getting a replacement from it depending on what AIB partner you bought your graphics card from can be very very difficult as you know graphics cards are in short supply at the moment compared to just how much demand there really is so in order to hopefully make sure that doesn't happen to you we will be talking about that in a second but first like I mentioned let's figure out why this is happening so why is it happening well it turns out that the you know new world game that just was released by Amazon happens to be very very stressful on your hardware and of course this is going to show some hardware issues that were already present because we do have to keep in mind that software like games does not have the ability to actually destroy your hardware so we do know that it has to be a hardware issue and the hardware issue can actually come from a number of different sources it can come from bad power delivery or it can come from the graphics card itself but first let's talk about bad power delivery because I actually have a little bit of a story I actually have a friend who recently bought an RTX 3080 Ti from Gigabyte and he was having a bunch of different shutdowns and he was using an EVGA 850 watt gold power supply that we thought for sure would be enough. Well, as it turns out, after we replaced his power supply with a Corsair HX1000 series power supply that's going to be 1000 watts platinum rated, the issue actually went completely away and we've been playing for over a week now and he has had no issues whatsoever, no more shutdowns and the issue that he was having is that his entire screen would turn black, his graphics card's fan would turn to max and he'd have to actually shut down his computer and wait a while before turning it back on for it to to work again so we can see there that you know some of these issues just for example could come from the fact that well these higher end graphics cards such as the 3090 and 3080 Ti have massive power spikes in fact I've seen some people report up to 600 watts peak out of a graphics card such as the RTX 3090 especially if you're going to be overclocking it so if you're someone who likes to overclock all their parts and you're running an 850 watt power supply well you do have to keep in mind that depending on your parts and whether or not you're overclocking that power supply might actually not have enough headroom as silly as as that sounds you might actually have to move to something like a thousand watt power supply so that's the first issue make sure that you have you know a power supply that's not only going to be able to deliver enough wattage which without tripping something like OCP over current protection but on top of that make sure that it's a high quality power supply and not some like no name random power supply that you found online for twenty dollars as that could definitely cause some issues so first of all make sure that you do have a good power supply now the second thing that you can do to ensure that this doesn't happen to you is that you need to make sure that you're 
you're not daisy chaining your power supply cables. Now, what do I mean by daisy chaining your cables? Well, so if you look at a power supply, you'll notice that it might have, you know, two, three, or even four, you know, different sections that you can plug in one of the PCIe power plugs to your graphics card. Now, if your graphics card, for example, needs two PCIe power plugs into it, do not take one of those power plugs and take the two different ends on it and plug it into the graphics card. Instead, take two separate cables and plug them into your power supply and plug those both in separately to the graphics card. And the same goes if you have three eight pin power um, connectors on the GPU. Take three separate cables and plug them in. Do not daisy chain the cables. If it comes with a single eight pin to dual eight pin on the other side, don't use the dual eight pin if you're drawing over 200 watts on a graphics card, as if you draw well over 200 watts, you're actually gonna be exceeding what that cable could potentially be rated for, as we don't necessarily know the wiring gauge of your cables. But now let's go ahead and talk about the graphics card itself, because yes, unfortunately, it is possible for you to buy a graphics card and that graphics card turns out to be defective. It's happened to me, it's happened to uh, my dad, it's happened to my friends, it just is something that happens. It's very rare, but it can occur to you, and just considering how many graphics cards are being produced right now, and how they're just, you know, rushing to get as many out as possible, I wouldn't be surprised if quality control at some of these AIBs has taken a hit. Now, I have no way of proving, you know, for sure if that's the case, but it's something that just wouldn't surprise me, so I wouldn't be too surprised if your chances of getting a bad card have increased since this whole craziness started with people having a hard time getting their hands on a graphics card. So now that we know that these issues are stemming from hardware and not the software, and if you're someone out there who you know you have a good power supply and you're not daisy chaining your cables, but you're worried about you know running some sort of very stressful uh, type of software, such as a game like New World, and it exposing hardware flaws in your hardware, and then you know maybe you blow up your your GPU. If you're scared of that happening, because you know I trust me, I get it. It's really hard to replace a GPU right now. Well, I do have some tips that could not only potentially save your hardware from exposing exploding in the meantime, but on top of that, it should give you a much better and more smooth gaming experience, and here's what you're gonna do. So for the first thing you wanna do, is go to the desktop on your computer. Now you're going to right click your desktop and click on the NVIDIA control panel if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Now once you're in the NVIDIA control panel, you're gonna head on over to manage 3D settings. From here, you're gonna click on the global settings and then you're gonna enable these settings. You're gonna go to low latency mode and you're gonna change that to ultra. And the reason why you're gonna change this to ultra is that if a game supports a reflex mode in the game, this is gonna give you a lower latency experience and it's gonna make it feel a little bit more smooth and a little bit more responsive. And then the second thing I want you to do is head on over to the max frame rate setting and I want you to change this somewhere between 60 FPS to 360 FPS depending on what type of monitor you have. Obviously, if you have a 60 hertz monitor, you'll choose a frame cap of 60 FPS. If you have a 360 hertz monitor, 360. If you have a 144 hertz monitor, I'd say somewhere between 140 to 144 hertz. If you want to drop a few frames off, go ahead and do that as well. It can sometimes lead to slightly more uh, smooth frame times. And now the reason why you're gonna wanna do this is because if you do actually set a maximum FPS cap, not only could this save your GPU from you know rendering unnecessary frames leading to higher stresses on the GPU and potentially destroying it if it does have a hardware issue, but on top of that, if you're someone who's suffering from coil whine, this could potentially get rid of your coil whine, and on top of that, it is gonna give you a better frame time experience, so leading to just a better gaming experience overall. And then on top of all this, if you do have a G-Sync monitor, Here's something else you're also gonna wanna do. Head on over to Vertical Sync and turn it to on. Now this might sound strange to you because you might be asking, well, why would I turn on Vertical Sync if I already have G-Sync? But you do actually wanna do this and here's why. There's actually a whole Blur Busters uh, article online if you wanna read more about it. But essentially, um, if you do enable Vertical Sync with G-Sync, it doesn't work like regular V-Sync. You're not gonna want V-Sync to be on in any games whatsoever still. That's gonna be bad, don't do that. But if you enable it in the global settings, like I just showed you, it does actually work in tandem with G-Sync to give you the lowest latency experience possible because G-Sync is only gonna work if you're not going above your frame rate cap. Uh, so let's say you have 120 hertz monitor at 80 frames per second, G-Sync's working. You go at 144 frames per second, G-Sync is no longer working. So G-Sync will work in tandem with V-Sync to ensure that you are at or below your maximum refresh rate and always getting that smooth G-Sync experience. So that's why you wanna enable that. And once again, it's gonna give you a much smoother 
smoother gaming experience. But once you have all those different various settings enabled, go ahead and click save on the bottom right corner and boom, you're done. You're gonna have not only a much smoother gaming experience, but on top of that, this could actually potentially save your graphics card as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this video did help you guys out. If it did help you out, please do me a favor, go ahead and share this video with as many of your friends as you can possibly share it with because I think this video is highly, highly important to potentially save people thousands of dollars as well as just give them a better gaming experience. On top of that, if you can drop a like and a comment below, uh, let me know what type of settings you're running in the NVIDIA control panel. But you know, either way, hopefully this helped you. This, these are the settings that I use on my personal computer and I've definitely noticed it's led to a much better gaming experience overall. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that software can actually kill hardware or is it only a hardware issue? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.